Hi Cardiff, it's Sean Rea here and I am now at the home of singer-songwriter Sean Evans. Another Sean, thank you very much for inviting nice me. Nice to meet you Sean. So can we just go back just a little bit, tell us about your time in coaching, how was it for you? Oh, it was amazing, come on, it was, you know, it was a dream. We, we went from little backroom studios to huge um, arenas, massive festivals. Great success. It was amazing. We we really rode it. We worked very hard. Um, I think at, at one point that we were on every single bill all around Europe. Um, it was grueling. It was hard work. But everything that's worth something is is worth working at. So we went for it, and we, you know we didn't have any management, so it was quite tricky. Really? Mm. Did you not? No, we so didn't. You managed yourselves. We managed ourselves, yeah. and in retrospect, that probably wasn't the best thing to do. I mean, we were just new to everything anyway, so we, we didn't really uh, bargain for the bulk of work that we were going to be up against, and it did take its toll on us. And the writing was it, it got a, bit, a little bit strained, and and so that's when I started writing with other people. I need to keep writing. You see, I'm a writer, so that's important to me to keep composing and keep writing. Definitely. And um, yeah, some great stuff came out of that as well. So it's been a fabulous journey. So Sean, can I ask, um, dance music, not, I don't think many people sort of, when they're younger, grow up going, I want to be a dance music artist. <laughs> um, and uh, we were They talking, do now. They do now. <laughs> <laughs> but we were talking a little bit off camera. You were sort of into um, classical, folk, mm. um, sort of male voice choir style music. Um, so where did you find that transition? Where were you really I've, interested I've in I've been music? very fortunate to have a life, a childhood that was steeped in music. There was always music, whether it was male voice choirs or my grandfather, you know, doing concerts in the front room with my tide and my cousins, or, or whether it was listening to my mother hoovering to Mark Bolan, or, or my dad listening to, you know, um, Dolly Parton. You know, it, there was such a lot, such a, a sweet shop of music around me that in, I've drawn from every everything, really, all of those experiences. Um, and I still am not a genre specific kind of person. I listen to to whatever turns me on and keeps me interested. Yeah. Lovely. Really yeah. nice. So. Um, you mentioned your collaborations as well. You've had some massive ones. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favourite? I've had some really not massive ones as well. You know, <laughs> I keep writing, 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 <laughs> and you throw enough sand and one, one will stick to the wall. You know what I mean? It's, it, it can be quite um, soul-destroying writing top lines because you write them and you feel that they're brilliant and they don't get cut. So when you get one cut, it's, it's amazing. And when you get one cut that goes to number one, that's amazing. Incredible. That's the, yeah, Absolutely in my incredible. 40s as well, which was like, yes, that's, that's go girl. Winning. Yeah, yeah. Feel power, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you're always writing, you're still writing now. Yeah. So what no, we do hide you, we do cat, <laughs> we do louder, you know, so yeah, it's, they're great. And it, it's, it amazes me that, that even young people still respond really strongly to those tracks. It's really encouraging. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, good for you, definitely. Yeah. We want to see more. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned already that you're a Welsh girl, mm. you're proud to be Welsh. Absolutely. Um, can I ask how do you feel the Welsh audiences compare to other audiences? There was a time that <clears throat> there was so much music in Wales that we were getting a little flippant. And we weren't really champion in our own, but I feel that's turning now a little bit. And there are so many great composers, great playwrights, great songwriters coming out of Wales now that we're starting to sit up and be very um, proud of them and supportive of them. So I, I mean, I've never done a bad gig in Wales, never. Oh, we did a gig so in the in the Globe uh, back in is it October, and the place just went off. It was just so lovely as a solo artist, not as Cushing, to go there and fill the place as a solo artist and get that same response that I was used to with Cushing and I was nervous about not getting, but I got it. And, and that just has inspired me to continue and keep writing, keep performing. I do like a bit of youth work and some coaching and, and that really, that, that's good for me too. I love that. I love to see the results of that and the confidence building that singing and songwriting can give to young people. Or, or older people, yeah, <laughs> you know. So yeah, there's there's plenty to be getting on with. And I mean, you must have had some incredible experiences, considering you you guys managed yourself as a machine as was, well. It's crazy, right? I mean, have, have you got sort of a, a funny story that's quite clean that you could share with no. us on call? <laughs> They're all terrible. <laughs> oh my god, if I could think of one right now, all the ones that are popping into my head are not. <laughs> <laughs> Not acceptable. What would you say would be oh. maybe your highlight of your career so far? Okay, well, there's been a few, but one springs to mind. Now, as a young girl, 
I was always at the festivals. We used to, my son and I, because I was young when I had my son, and we travelled with a travelling cafe through the festivals, and it was just our our zone, you know, it was where we were happiest on on the land, and and um, so we'd get into Glastonbury, you know. Um, I've never bought a ticket for Glastonbury <laughs> because we've climbed in, we've dug under, we've driven in, we've d done whatever. <laughs> <to Glastonbury>. And <laughs> then when Koshin were headlining on, I think it was the New World stage or the Jazz stage, New World stage, that's it. We helicoptered in. Wow! And I was like, this is it. <laughs> I took my son with me in the helicopter, <laughs> and we were all like a bunch of kids just landing in Glastonbury in the festival. And that, you know, seeing the the audience there, there were a lot of um, kids that we'd grown up with, and they were there right in the front, and they had a cardboard box which said on it they'd pulled this cardboard box apart and painted on it, "Sean, remember us, the Brecht for kids." And um, for them to see me, a very alternative um, from from quite an alternative culture, if you like, for them to see me headlining that stage, it meant that they had the option, they had the possibility. There was always going to be a possibility that they could do that as well. They could just they could achieve whatever they wanted to achieve because she's doing it. I can do it, and that was a big moment for me. Yeah, definitely. It did almost feel like you are to realise that you're a role model to people. That's quite incredible. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. But it's it's sheer determination and focus and and hard work and belief and surrounding yourself with people that are kind to you and that believe in you. Oh, it's it, really nice. It That's just, so nice. It works that way. Yeah. <laughs>